turn to prophetic dateline. You know, we have someone on the air with us today, Jennifer LeClaire, and she was just sharing such things of bringing hope. And, no. uh, you know, I just, uh, I felt life as she was sharing, you know, what the Holy Spirit's been telling her. Well, and our viewers are going to get some of that. Yeah, you're going to. It's going to get all over it's you, gonna okay? Just you're going to get right hope all you. over you and amazing stuff. So. Yeah, and she is with us from Fort Lauderdale, far Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Where, where it's warm. Probably much warmer yeah, warm. than Dallas, yes. She is the former editor of Charisma Magazine, the founder of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement, and you can join her in F Fort Lauderdale at the Awakening House of Prayer. You can go on her website, Jennifer Claire LeClaire. It's L E, capital L E, capital C L A I R E, to join org. in. Yeah, dot org. If you want to go mm -hmm. join their services, I, I have seen some of them online. Jennifer, they're amazing. She's written over 50 books. Her newest one, I'm going to ask her to hold it up. The prophet, Prophet's Devotional. Look at it. It's That's big, nice, it's yeah. oversized, and it's amazing. So, you know, every day, daily, you can read that. You can get inspired, instructed. Uh, I think, uh, Jennifer, that is a, I would say it's a wisdom book. You mm. know, it's like and there's books that do something, but it's just like she just took things she has learned from many years of ministry and put that wisdom into those devotionals. So you you actually are not just being inspired, you're, you're being mentored, you're being taught. And and I, I really love that book. And, uh, you know, Mike, as we were sharing, uh, Jennifer was telling uh, us that, you know, God has given us some amazing things. And for this year, 2022, you know, there's, there's many aspects of the prophetic. People will feel different things. You know, we've had this broad uh, brush theme of the mm -hmm. era of the Holy Spirit. But she was sharing that this, she has a word, this is the year to redeem the time, redeem the time. And would you kind of unpack that a little bit for us? Absolutely. Thanks, Mike and Cindy, for having me on. And thanks for the opportunity to share. You know, as, as you both know, I've gone through a year of just real significant trials and losses. And a lot of people have. And, yeah. and when we go through those times, part of, you know, if you're a high achiever, especially you feel like, oh, I've lost time. Oh, you know, I had all these plans. I had all these dreams. I had all these goals. I think a lot of us can say that we had things we wanted to do and we feel like the enemy stole from us. But the reality is, is that God is the ultimate redeemer of time. God saw the pandemic. God saw every loss you would sustain. God saw those goals, those dreams, and all is not lost. As a matter of fact, I have really good news. Nothing is lost. If these things that have happened to us, whatever's happened to you, maybe you, maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you've got a prodigal that's gone astray. Whatever you're dealing with, if it was going to destroy your destiny, God would not have allowed it. And if this time that's been stolen or this time that's been wasted, this time that we feel has been lost, if that was going to hinder your breakthrough, God would not have allowed it. We have to begin to really look at the sovereignty of God because he is the one who redeems the time, not only the time, but our time. You know, David said, our, my times are in your hands. David, mm -hmm. I've been studying the life of David. I mean, he had Goliaths come after him. He had Saul's come after him. He had his own son come after him. But David always had the right perspective that our times are in his hands. And so, you know, we've all lost time. I think sometimes people say, when was the last time you went to London? I'm like, okay, was that 2019? Was it 2020? <laughs> it, it's like, it's it's all a blur. Like sometimes you don't even remember the time's just been so compressed. But here's the thing. God wants to make up for lost time in your life. Mm. All of those who are watching, he, he, he will make it up to, you. you know, Jeremiah or Joel rather, Joel 2 speaks of restoring 
the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust, whatever the enemy has done in your life to make you feel like you've been denied or delayed or stymied or stalled or hindered, God is going to make that up to you. I feel like really strongly that we have to just remember the sovereignty of God that he, I like what Catherine Kuhlman used to say. She said, as long as God is still on the throne and hears and answers prayer, it's going to be all right. Mm-hmm. And I really believe that those whose eyes are stayed on Jesus, we're going to enter in, some of us already have, we're going to enter in to a divine acceleration where he not only makes up for lost time, but we begin to see quantum leaps. And so hold out hope because God is doing a work. Listen, God is doing a work in us so that he can do a work through us. Mm. Wow. You know, uh, that reminds me uh we were doing a prayer gathering uh, uh, for Turnaround Tuesdays, you know, uh, at recently. And God just gave me this, this word that there was somebody there that hadn't had a hug for like a month. It's an unusual mm-hmm. word. You know, and a, a young woman came up, I hugged her, she began to weep. And then she gave me this testimony. Now, this totally ties into exactly what you've been saying. Mm-hmm. She said, Cindy, at the Deborah conference last July, you gave me some money and you said, God is going to give you a house. What I didn't know is she was homeless. And through December, she didn't know, you know, I don't know if she was going from house to house, but she was homeless. December 27th of 2021, she didn't have a house. And she said, I just was able to buy a home in a little city red oak near us. And I bought a house and now I'm going to be able to take women that have been sex trafficked into my home and I'm going to bring healing to them. Talk about a turnaround, right? You know, this woman that was hopeless, helpless, couldn't help anybody else inside of two months, bang, it turned it around. And not only did that give her a, a new path back onto a destiny, look at all the other people that will be impacted yeah, by that. Yeah. So. Not only is she getting a turnaround, her turnaround precipitates other people's turnaround. So that's an encouraging word. What Jennifer is telling you is true. Not only will you have a turnaround, your turnaround is going to cause other people to have a turnaround. Yeah, now there's something you talk about, Jennifer, that is so good. You talked about all the trauma that we have been through in COVID and everything. Can you unpack that a little more? Yeah, I remember it must have been the early part of 2020 when the Lord said that he, that there'd been a spirit of trauma let loose in the earth. Now, okay. this was before, yeah, it was a serious word. We actually had a service about it, but this was before we saw a lot of the fallout from COVID. This was before the, you know, millions of deaths. This was really early on when we didn't even really understand how serious this was. And the Lord showed me this has been let loose in the earth. And I'll tell you, I've never seen so many people so traumatized all over the world, Christians and non-Christians alike. It's a serious issue. It's not just from death. It's not just from disease. It's from betrayals. People don't understand, uh, you know, all sorts of issues can cause trauma. And I really feel like now we see all these wars and rumors of wars. You know, we see all these threats of more pandemics. I mean, here's the thing. We need to take the time now. This is part of redeeming the time, actually. We need to take the time to really press into the Lord for healing. And listen, you don't need to go to a fancy doctor or, you know, David cried out to God. Do you not think that David had, you know, had experienced some trauma? I mean, Saul was chasing him down, tried to kill him several times. You know, he lost the kingdom. Absalom's, you know, chasing him out of town. I mean, David had trauma. But what did David do? He cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, you know, I feel like I can't go another day. I feel like I can't make it. I feel like everybody's betraying me. I feel, but he cried out to the Lord and the Lord healed him. And I feel like we're as part of redeeming the time. See, God will thrust us forward very far if we have hurts and wounds where we can't sustain the blessing. So Mm -hmm. he's wanting to bless us first with healing so that we can then step into our highest and best calling. Yeah, that's great. Maybe you're listening and you have gone through trauma. You know, actually, I don't know anybody who hasn't gone through some kind of trauma, okay? I mean, but some more. I know Jennifer's story with health with her mom and whatever it is. There are seasons of our life, you know, where we have to help family or there's betrayals or, you know, 
Uh, the good word is God has told us that there's going to be family revival and family healing. But I want to encourage you to do what Jennifer is saying. That's one thing I think Mike and I have learned through the years. We have, we have gotten help when we needed it, haven't oh, we? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And the other thing that, that there's things that you can take heart in that are that are shown for us as examples in the Word of God. I, I always think when people start talking about trauma and all this kind of stuff, Job being the perfect example of that, you know, he had every time he turned around, someone was coming to him <laughs> with some evil report or some bad thing that was happening. And his temptation was just to give up on everything he knew was a promise of God. Mm -hmm. And yet after that season turned, and this is something that's important for you, after that season turned, there was a compression of blessing. In other words, he ended up with double. Uh, not only did he recover what he lost, but he ended up with the double. So when, when you finish the season of the turmoil, there is a, you could call it a time of compressed blessing, mm. you know, compressed blessing where things happen so rapidly that you end up with twice what you had and what you could have lost. Yeah, Jennifer, you were talking about uh, to us on the aside about Joel and God restoring years that had been robbed. And mm -hmm. But how do you get to that place? You know, tell us some practical how-tos. Well, you know, it begins with understanding really what's happening in the spirit realm. See, this past year and really the past five years have been very difficult for me. Mm -hmm. And I got to the point, I'll be very transparent. I got to the point about three weeks ago where I said to the Lord, I'm not doing anything else until I see what's happening because this isn't stopping. This has been going on for five years. This has been one trial after another. This has been warfare after warfare. This has been, you know, great blessing. Great opportunity. You know, I've been on some of the biggest platforms in the world. We've grown our prayer movement just massively. So all these blessings, but all these heavy trials. And I feel like I've lost so many opportunities. And yet God has been gracious to provide so many opportunities. I'm like, God, I'm stopping because I've got people that have worked with me 20 years that stole from me. I've got the associate pastors who are leaving suddenly. All this is happening. I said, God, I'm not doing anything else. I'm going to stay right here <laughs> until you speak to me. And he reminded me, and this is a real key. He reminded me of a prophetic word that he gave me almost five years ago to the day. It was the prophetic word that he gave me that told me the path that I was going to be on going forward. And he asked me in that prophetic word to make a decision if I would go the road less traveled on and do things that looked foolish to the church, but looked, you know, in, in his eyes, it was the right way. And when I, when he reminded me of that prophetic word, all the warfare, all the trials, all the crushing, everything I've been through in the past five years, it made sense. When I read that prophetic word, I understood that what God was seeking, I was ready. I felt like I wanted, I wouldn't give up, clearly. I've written my resignation letter to God many times. He never takes it. He just puts it in a drawer. Obviously, I wouldn't have really given up. I've got too much in my hands that God's called me to do. But here's the thing that some of you need to understand. When you feel like giving up, when the enemy's trying to get you to give up, it's not the time to give up. It's the time to surrender to God even more. So what God is wanting from so many of us in this season is more surrender, more abiding in him, more waiting for him, because we are hidden in Christ in God. And the times we're in, it has been traumatic. But if we want God to redeem our time, we truly, like David, have to believe that our times are in his hands. And if we're suffering, it's because God is conforming us into the image of Christ. If we have warfare, it's because the devil's trying to knock us out before we get to the high calling. God is still in control. And I believe, as you do and as you know, that we have authority over the enemy. But there's some things that just happen. Look what Mike was talking about with Job. God allowed it. And so God is not going to allow more to come on us than we can bear. And if we want to step into that time redemption, we first must believe what's understand what's happening in the spirit. Look back to the prophetic words God has spoken over your life and really trust him that he is the restorer of all things. Yeah, you, you know, you're telling these stories and it just reminded me. I'm sure as you're listening, some of you are beginning to think, oh, yeah, I went through this. I went through this. My father died. This happened, you know. I mean, we have tragedy in our lives. You know, we've had tragedy. You've had tragedy. Mm -hmm. But we, you know, we make that decision. Well, you know, like, where else do we go? You know, I mean, what else do we do? You know, we serve the Lord. But 
Uh, our son Daniel was born and uh, God had told us he was going to be born, told us his name, uh, that we'd have a son. And and uh, then he was very, very sick and we didn't know if he'd live. Yeah, it came out of the womb that way. Yeah, yeah, he was very ill. And then the doctors thought he couldn't walk and we were such in a battle for him. And one day, and, and Mike was having to work in another city. <laughs> and, you know, I just, I told the Lord, Lord, you say you won't give us more than we can bear, but there's a decided difference of opinion going here. I have had it. I am out of here, you know. I don't know where I'm going to go, but I just had it, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and remember, he had the little cast on his foot. Yeah. And yeah. then there, uh, there came a day yeah. when he kicked the cast off his foot. Yeah. He, kicked, he just he, kicked his foot yeah. and the cast came off. Yeah, and that was cast, like a turning. Yeah, yeah, he did. He Yeah, because he was born with a club foot and the doctors said they they couldn't find muscle in his leg. That's another whole story. But anyway, uh what what let me let me talk to you all. When I have gone through the worst hell on earth, God has brought me into such a large place afterwards. It's like you almost don't remember. You know, it's like it's like a woman that has a baby. You have a baby and you're thinking, I am never, ever doing this again. And then what do you do? You have another baby. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. but but it, it's like that for some of you. And, and we're going to have Jennifer share into this and and pray over you, too. But some of you. You're listening and you have just I, I feel like waiting for you. you're at the point of breaking. You are broken. You feel like you cannot be broken anymore. But I want to say that's just the time that God turns it around. That's just the moment where, you know, I say grace is God's elastic. It's just the moment where, all right, I can do this. You want to jump in, Jennifer? <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, this whole five years, difficult, the whole time, difficult, many blessings. But just this week, just this week, I mean, I've been trying to hire people to take some of this load off and try to hire people to advance the, you know how hard it is to find good people. Just this week, the Lord brought me this dream team, three people, one of them a major executive at a Christian company who has recently, uh, you know, gone on out, out on his own. And you couldn't have asked for a better dream team. And I know that this is the reward of waiting. See, God rewards those who wait. And mm -hmm. so we really, we really, really, it's so easy to take our eyes off God. There's so much going on in the world. There's so much drama, so much trauma, so many challenges. Listen, people sometimes think that preachers and pastors and prophets don't have any trouble. <laughs> I like to be transparent because I want people to know, listen, we're all we're all going through this together. We are in this together. But I promise you this, that God is not a man that he should lie. And he always gives you double for your trouble, triple for your trial. If the devil stole from you, he's got to pay back seven times. So you got to get your eyes on the God of the payback rather than the enemy that stole, because we get so discouraged when we look at the work of the thief, we get more and more down and out, but God wants to take us from down and out to up and over. But it requires looking at him like Brother Lawrence, practicing the presence of God. It's not easy. It's a process. We are all masterpieces, but we're also all in process. Here's the thing. Guys, stop being so hard on yourself. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You can do this. Don't beat yourself up because you fell down. Just get back up again. God's going to do it for you. He's going to come through for you. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging bread. It's going to be better than you ever thought it could be. Just hold on. Oh, that's good exhortation. Yeah, you know, the, the, the scriptures talk about uh, that coming through trials and you'll come forth as pure gold. Well, that means that you could come forth as impure gold. But if you if you are able to, uh, and, and I think he looks at how faithful were you when things were really hot? Because it takes heat, a lot of heat to bring forth pure gold. Because if you don't get enough heat, the dross or the impurities don't come to the surface so you can get them off so you can have pure gold. So... I believe that God really holds forth in greater value the things that you accomplish in times of trial than than maybe even things that just go well all the time for you. Yeah, you know, Jennifer, Jennifer uh, 
and I don't know if these are available yet, Jennifer, but Jennifer is actually doing um, kind of like a documentary in a way. I, I know her, you, you guys may not know her story, but what she's talking about now is nothing compared to where she's come from. I mean, mm -hmm. she has been in the most abusive, horrible situation. Are you still making those videos? Yep, it's finished and we're working on uh, getting it out. We want to make a big splash with it. We want to reach believers and unbelievers alike because if, you know, when you hear my story, if God can do what he's done in my life with <laughs> all the wrongs and all the injustices, man, you're going to be so encouraged. You're going to be like, oh, I've not gone through half of that mess. You know, I, I'm, I'm in a good position. So it, it's going to be good. It's called Vind Vindicated. And it's going to be out pretty soon. Vindicated. Yeah. And, and, you know, so I was watching it, you know, and I've known Jennifer for a long time. But I didn't know kind of the the past stuff that she's been through. I know more recent things. And and I, the bottom line, listen, listen, you all, you're going to make it. Okay? You're, that's it. You're going to make it. You know, through uh, what is it, amazing grace. So many trials, you know, whatever, and tribulations, I have already come, you know. But, but. Uh, God is going to redeem it. You know, everything you have, every loss, things, that, you know, things that are mysteries. You know, Jennifer, there are things that happen to us, right, that we just think that shouldn't be. Okay, that's not in my theology that person died. You know, I've had loss when a family member died and I warred for them. I just thought, and the Lord just said to me, will you just give that to me? Will you just trust me with that? You don't have to understand everything. You want to, but just trust me with that. And uh, ha have you ever had those moments? I know you have. Yes, and recently, it's really in the past month as I've been praying and processing a lot of what I've gone through, um, you know, we had this idea of surrender, and it sounds like this big, oh, my God, what does this mean? How do I do this? How do I do that? How do I surrender? Like, you know, I've, I've got all the... But the Lord gave me a different look, a different angle on this. He said, start surrendering the little things. Okay, so I'm going to start surrendering this frustration. Lord, I surrender this frustration to you. I surrender this, 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 this grief to you. I surrender this, this complaining to you. I surrender. And, and every time you're doing Whining. something that you know is, is sort of, uh, not yielded to the Holy Spirit. And it's, it's almost like the same concept of casting your cares. But if you start surrendering every little thing, Lord, I surrender this, this appetite. I don't want to eat this piece of cheesecake. I surrender this appetite. I surrender this, this desire that, that may not be of you. I surrender this person. I, it's almost like putting it on the altar. But as we surrender the little things before we know it, we're, we're completely surrendered. It takes time. But that's really the key because, you know, David was surrendered. If you look at David, he was surrendered. He was surrendered completely to God. He knew that God, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, and the lion's den, they surrendered into the hands of an almighty God. And when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of that fire, they got promoted. When Daniel came out of that fire, he had a deeper trust than ever. And that's what it takes sometimes. It's really, you know, in Bishop Hammond's book, you know, your highest calling, you know, I gave it to a friend of mine and, and he said, you know, I, I thought this was about my highest calling and it's really all about suffering. I'm like, yes, that's why he asked me to write the forward. And, you know, when, when Bishop asked me to write the forward to that book, I was like, why me? He's like, cause you've suffered girl. Cause you've suffered. But this is just, but, but the, the reward is going to be worth it. I promise you it's going to be worth it. You feel when you're going through it, this is not worth it. I don't want to do this. And if we're not careful, we'll be like Job's wife and we'll see, hey, just curse God and die. But, but Job would not renounce God. Job pressed in deeper to God. And that's what we need to do. God's going to make you, you're, you're, gonna, you're not going to come out smelling like smoke. You're going to come out smelling like roses. Yeah, you know, crisis shows spiritual regression. And those I mentor, I always watch them like, Okay, when they're going through a challenge, what are their attitudes? You know, are they complaining? Do they get snarky? Uh, do they get rude? Do they, you know, it's like, how much fruit of the Spirit? I mean, what, how much fruit of the Spirit do you really walk in? You know, and I think in the midst of this, God is trying to increase our level of, are you walking in love? Are you walking in kindness? Are you in self-control? Are you, you know, we don't talk about this very much, you know, perseverance of these different things, long suffering. And, you know, if, if, uh, if, if we can't 
deal with these little everyday things. And some of them are not little, believe me, losses, you know, there's significant loss. But then you think about people in Ukraine and their nation being invaded. You think about, you know, you read stories of mm -hmm. people, you know, uh, they're living in a mud hut and they have, they don't have water. They, you know, are people that are in abusive situations. There's always someone suffering more than us, you know? And so I, I just think that, that the Lord will put us through tests. Now, even the things that Satan does, God is watching us. And the Lord has often showed this. And he's like, I'm watching you. What's going to be your attitude in this? You want me to use you and you can't deal with this thing? How can I use you in the big things when I can't trust you in the small things? You know, if you're going to be such a complainer and, and you have food to eat and you have a warm house and you have all this, you know, uh, how, and, and you're complaining about that, then how can I use you to change a nation? How can I, you, you know, I mean, so I don't know about you, I'm sure, Jennifer, but the, the Lord just kind of smacks me up the side of the head, you know, sometimes it says, let me put this in perspective for you, Jacobs. Yeah, no, he does. You know, he, he speaks to me very kindly, but also very directly. And, uh, you know, when you go through the trial, that's when you find out what's in you. You know, I always tease people and say, you know, if I came and stomped on your foot, the first word out of your mouth is what's in you. You know, I've got, I've gotten to where I've gotten to where when something happens, thank Jesus. And I, I'm not, I'm not perfect in this, but I've gotten to where when someone betrays me, I begin to rejoice literally because I've been betrayed so many times that I know the outcome. But when you have experience with God and maybe some people who are watching don't have as much experience with God, well, then you're going to need greater faith just to trust God. But when you have a history with God, you begin to see how the word really works. And so you know, I'm betrayed. I'm like, okay, I know something really good is going to happen. You know, when someone, when I get surprised or taken off guard by something in the spirit, I pray in the spirit. I didn't do that 20 years ago. I had other things coming out of my mouth and other things coming out of my mind, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, that scripture and you're alluding to rejoice when men say evil against you, you know, uh, uh, for my name's sake, you know, rejoice, you know, yeah. and like something will happen or I'll watch, I'll read some article or some news service will be saying something about me. And the Lord will kind of look at me, I feel like, and say, well, are you rejoicing? Are you rejoicing? <laughs> yeah. Are you counting it all joy when men say evil against you? No, you're not. You are whining. You're saying, you know, like fire from heaven should come down on these people. This is not right. You know, it comes down to being like Jesus. It comes mm -hmm. down to really living a Christ-like life. I just feel the presence of God settling there so much, um, you know, on that. You know, I think uh, this a good segue from that, because, you know, you really, people believe, well, Jesus could do anything, you know, you know, when he was persecuted and he had this great attitude and stuff, but there's others in the Bible. And we were talking before we started shooting about Nehemiah, you know, and here Nehemiah was given an assignment to rebuild the walls and rebuild Jerusalem. And, and he actually left a pretty cushy place. Like he was a <laughs> cup, cup bearer for the king in Babylon and he could have just stayed there. But yeah, he only had to not die if somebody wanted to kill the king. That was easy. Yeah. But <laughs> so anyway, he comes back to Jerusalem and his assignment is to rebuild. And now you, you should expect people who are external like if you're a believer, external to the kingdom to come against you. But Nehemiah even had people in the house attacking him because they were in league with what the enemy wanted. So uh, to unpack a little about what you were sensing about Nehemiah and how that applies. Yeah, we're, 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 a lot of us are in a time of rebuilding. Some, you know, businesses being rebuilt, families being rebuilt, you know, just our own selves, rebuilding ourselves back up after a long season of trial and lockdowns and all those sorts of things. We need to rebuild with an alert spirit, knowing that God is with us. The enemy is still going to attack. You know, I, you know, sometimes people say, well, Jennifer, you, you know, you're too much into warfare. Not really. I, I've got a church. I share two messages every week. Very, very little do I talk about warfare. But the reality is, is the enemy is is 
you know, he roams around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So as we begin to rebuild, we have to expect that if we're building something great for God, when the enemy attacks, it's a backhanded compliment. I am always more concerned about people who don't have any warfare, because if you don't have any warfare, you're probably not making that big of an impact. But I know most of the people watching this broadcast, they you've got some warfare. Guess what? When you are on assignment for God, you have an anointing, you have a grace, and you have apostolic prophetic wisdom. Nehemiah had the trumpet blower next to his side. That was a picture of the apostolic and the prophetic working together. God has graced you. You're able to rebuild, even if it takes you a little longer than you'd like. Listen, it took Nehemiah's crew longer to rebuild the wall because they had a, a shovel in one hand and a, a, a tool in one hand and a weapon in the other. So it took them a little longer. But you will build something this time that the enemy can't take down. When I lost everything, I was put in jail, falsely accused for a crime I didn't commit. I lost every penny I had paying an attorney to get me out of jail. I ended up on food stamps in the backside of Alabama for 13 months. But when God restored me, he brought me back to South Beach, put me on the 11th floor of a condo overlooking the ocean. It took me longer than I wanted to to get there. But when God is in the rebuilding, you know, the enemy will attack it, but you will overcome it. Isaiah 54 verse 7, no weapon formed against you you shall prevail. It doesn't say you're going to have to, it doesn't say you're not going to have to fight, but you will win. God wouldn't have sent you to the battle line if you hadn't already won the fight. David ran to the battle line and took down his Goliath. Everyone else was scared. To the victor goes the spoils. If you don't fight, you won't win. But if you get on God's building program, whatever he's building, and you begin to build and the enemy comes against you, it's going to be like ants at a picnic. You're going to have wisdom. You're going to have grace. You're going to have backup. You know, and you're going to win. So be encouraged as you rebuild this time, the enemy's not going to knock it down. Well, just pray for us, yeah. you know, as we wrap this up, Jennifer, please. Yeah. Yeah. So Father, we thank you. We, we praise you because you are a good God. You are steadfast and enduring. Father, give us an enduring spirit. Help us to keep our eyes on the prize. Help us to lean into you, to surrender all that we have and all that we are, knowing that whatever the enemy has stolen, you will restore it. You will give us beauty for ashes, the, you know, the, the garment of praise. You will give us the oil of joy. You will give us everything we need to succeed because that's how good you are. So strengthen us. Help us to see your hand at work, even when we don't sense you, to know that you're working all things out together for the good because we love you and we're called according to your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. Get her book, yeah, Prophet, Prophet's Devotional. And don't forget my newest book, Reformers Arise. Listen, this is going viral. People are reading it, consuming it. They want revival and reformation. That You may not know how to be a reformer, but you can learn how and you can change the world. God bless you. Thank you for being with us on Prophetic Thank Gateline. you. Thank you, Jennifer. Bye-bye. <laughs> God bless you all. Bye.